We're two of a kind, make it a go, make it pro together. There were some fun sitcoms in the 1980s and many were loved. One that was a weekly watch for me was Silver Spoons. Aside from the catchy theme song, it was a must watch for many. Silver Spoons was a TV show starring Ricky Schroeder, who I first recall from the movie The Champ. Yeah. And later goes by Rick and stars in shows like NYPD Blue. Aside from Rick Schroeder, we would have Joel Higgins, who is best known in this show as Ricky's dad Edward, who was also in some guest spots in Home Improvement, Two Guys, A Girl, and A Pizza Place, Family Matters, and more. You do jingles. Jingles mm -hmm. that we would know. Commercial jingles? Yeah. Could you do a few for us? <laughs> I don't have, I'd have to do a Macapulco. Do, do a Macapulco, <laughs> yeah. And not only that, probably without any instruments. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Oh, let's see. You know, I'll bet you, uh, Mom's No Kool-Aid is the one for kids, right? We did. It was on for a lot of years. We did All the World Loves M&M's, still on. Pure Milk Chocolate Joy for everyone. And uh, my favorite that we ever did was It's Meal Time from Now On, My Finicky Friend. I like that one because it's about dogs. I like dogs. And, uh, it also stars Aaron Gray, who plays Kate and is the love interest of Edward. And Kate's will they or won't they relationship gives way to a third season wedding. Aaron Gray is probably more known for playing Colonel Wilma Deering in the science fiction series Buck Rogers in the 25th Century. We also have Franklin Seals, who plays Edward's business manager Dexter Stuffins. And he was joined in the fall of 1984 by his hip breakdancing nephew, Alfonso Spears, played by Alfonso Ribeiro. That is before he went on to be Carlton and gave us the Carlton. And he would later become Ricky's new best friend. The show was created by Martin Cohan, Howard Leeds, and Ben Starr. The concept of the show is that Ricky Stratton arrives at the mansion of the father he has never met, Edward Stratton III, to introduce himself. His dad is not too far off from being a kid himself and has the living room every 80s kid would love. Full-size arcade games including Dragon's Lair, A Train, and so much more. He also happens to run a toy business. This show kind of reminds me of the movie The Toy starring Richard Pryor. And Ricky's mom, Evelyn, played by Christine Belford, places Ricky into a military boarding school. When Ricky arrives at the Stratton residence, Edward is stunned to discover that his long ago brief marriage produced a son. Edward has one line saying, we weren't married that long, and Ricky points out, it doesn't take that long. Yeah, but, but, but how? I mean, when? Who? Evelyn, your ex-wife, remember? How can we have a son? We weren't married that long. Well, it doesn't take that long. <laughs> After Ricky's visit, he returns to boarding school where his dad decides it may be better for Ricky to live with him in the mansion. During the series, you would see several other stars. For example, Ricky befriends bad boy Derek Taylor, played by Jason Bateman, a smooth-talking cowboy, J.T. Martin, played by Bobby Fight, and nerdy Freddie Lippin Cottleman, played by Corky Pigeon. Through all the seasons and with all his friends, they get into a lot of trouble and learn many childhood lessons along the way. Once Ricky, Freddy, and Alfonso were in high school in season four, they added another bad boy, Brad, played by Billy Jacoby, who I will always remember as the annoying brother in the movie Just One of the Guys. You are so hot. Buddy, I just ate. Thanks for stopping by, bud. Anytime, sis. Now that we know what the show was, let's take a look at a very special episode of Silver Spoons. Afternoon, everybody, and thank you so, so much, NapTown76. You are welcome here. And with that, let's go. This episode is called Spare the Rod and aired on March 24th, 1984 on NBC. It was directed by Jack Shea and guest stars Mino Palouse as Toby Andrews and Alan Williams as Larry Andrews. This episode starts off with Ricky, who brings home a friend after playing some basketball. Meanwhile, Edward is giving Kate a wonderful birthday gift that is apparently an expensive antique. Well, personally, I think it's atrocious. Now a daisy. I think a daisy would bring out the green in my eyes, and I could totally rock that. We then find out it's not even Kate's birthday, and her birthday is next week. 
but I wanted you to have something really terrific for your birthday. Oh, thank you. But my birthday isn't until next week. Hmm? <laughs> next Thursday. I know that. I know that. This is uh, pre-birthday present. It's a uh, <laughs> wait till you see your main birthday present. <laughs> and this would give you kind of a baseline of what kind of person Edward Stratton III was, with very good intentions, but often getting things not quite right. As the dialogue starts, it turns out Ricky's friend Toby fell out of a tree while saving a cat and broke his arm. It is this scene we can see the awesome living room with Tempest, Dragon's Lair, and of course what motif is not complete without giant crayons. Crayons? Crayons. That's kind of a weird word. How do you guys say it? Crowns? Crayons. Crayon. Anyway, back on the episode, we are told that his basketball buddy Toby is quite accident prone and actually gets hurt quite a lot. The boys start playing ball in the house and we see the ball get loose and cause some damage. This is when Edward gives Rick a firm talking to, and discipline. Toby swoops in to smooth things over and says, hey, it was his idea and not Ricky's fault this happened. Toby tells Ricky how lucky he is and that his dad may have reacted differently. Time. Did you see the way he yelled at me? Yeah, you really got off easy. Easy? Yeah. If it would have been my dad, he would have done a lot more than just yell. What would your dad have done? Never mind. Uh-oh, we can see where this might be going. When Ricky digs a bit deeper, Toby tries to deflect with jokes and humor. But Ricky is having none of that and pushes harder. That is when Toby confides in him that his dad hits him, and Toby says it's all his fault. Okay. It's just that when my dad gets mad, he gets a little physical. I mean, he hits you? Sometimes. But he does it for my own good. I'm a real screw up. Bull! You're a great guy! Who else would risk their life to save a cat? Time out. Now this can be a common response for those who are being victimized. And they try to take the blame out on themselves. So here is my official PSA for this video. It's not your fault and there is help out there. Please, 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 if you see something, say something. Or if you yourself are stuck, you can reach out to support. And here are some resources you can use. I'll also put them at the end of the video and in the description. Okay, back to the show. It is revealed that his arm being broke was indeed from his dad and not from the cat. So as they say, the cat is out of the bag. <laughs> See what I did there? Get it? The cat has the cat in, in the tree from earlier? No? Okay. With this information, Ricky is torn. Does he break the secret from Toby or spill the beans? Toby arrives even more beat up, although honestly, he kind of just looks like a chimney sweep. Oh, blow me a kiss. And that's lucky too. And that is when Ricky has to break his silence. Rick comes clean and encourages Toby to come clean as well. Your father hit you, didn't he? Yeah, he hit me. But look, I had it coming. We got this brand new carpet. And I tracked mud all over it. Toby's fear is that he does not want his dad to get in trouble. And that has to be tough. On one hand, he loves his dad. On the other hand, his dad needs to be stopped. Edward invites Toby's dad, Larry, over to confront him. Once Larry arrives and is cornered, the dad of course lies and tries to storm out when things get angry. And we see the real side of Toby's dad followed by remorse. Toby got the bruises from you. You hit him. Are you accusing me of beating up my own son? Look, I know there are reasons these Did things Toby happen. Did Toby tell you I hit him? I think we should discuss the situation. I'm not going to listen to this crap. Just sit down, Larry, okay? Here's your drink. Forget it! I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Now, this is a tricky subject, and while I have no expertise in these matters, Edward suggests getting help rather than calling the authorities. Now, this is when his dad goes on making excuses why it happens. He There's works 60 hours hard. a week, and so it's difficult Every when Toby's chores are not it. done. And I mean, come on, Same really, thing. dude? Bruh. So no police really are called and no charges pressed. They decide to get him help with a group called Parents Anonymous. 
and that's a different direction than most shows by being sympathetic to the abuser and not pressing charges. And one thing I'll give Silver Spoon's props for is on these serious moments, they cut that laugh track out. I talked about how different strokes on this video here kept the laugh track in and it just felt a little weird. When Larry does not want to go to the meetings, Edward gives him this final warning. It could be right. I remember last year there was a kid came into the hospital, he was pretty banged up, and the doctors found out that his father had been beating him. They reported it, and the case went to court, and the father swore up and down that he would never do that again. So the judge gave him the benefit of the doubt. And then a month later, he lost control and hit his son again. Found himself right back in court. Only this time, he was on trial for murder. The final conversation is with Larry and Toby, and it's pretty sad. We see Toby not wanting his dad to go. At the same time, it has to happen. Something needs to change, and here's that conversation. We're going to have to split up for a while. Why? Because I have a problem. I think it's about time I did something about it. While I'm doing that, I want you to stay with Aunt Florence for a while. Dad, everything in our house has a doily on it. <laughs> But she'll take care of you while I work on my problem. And that's where our episode wraps up. I would like to cover some lighter episodes of Silver Spoons or other 80s sitcoms. Let me know what you think in the comments. And we always appreciate a like and subscribe if you are willing. So until next time, this is Kevin. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Remember hair metal, awesome bands. So